Okay, I am Jan McMillan. For those of you who don't know me, welcome to all the new folk. We are so happy to see you. And um, I am married to Nicholas, and we are on the eldership team here at Glenridge Church. We've been here for eight years, and we love the local church. And my mum's here. Give it up for Patricia. And before I start, I've asked Cezzy to come pray, and she's also got a word. Um, so this is Sarah Spooner. Do you have a mic, Maddie? Sarah is full of life. The river of, of God flows through her, so take it away, Sarah. Thanks, guys. Hello, I'm Sarah. Um, you usually find me sitting there next to Josh, not standing here. But um, I had a word for Roxy, Good actually. One. And now she's... Stand up, Roxy. There she is. Hello, Roxy. Stand up. Um, Rox, as I was worshiping and praying, I felt God highlight you. That's good. And um, I just, if, if you haven't met Rox, I do highly recommend going and having a conversation with her. She is the most delightful, welcoming human I think I've ever met. And I just want to pub- publicly honor you, Rox. Um, you're That's amazing. Good. Everything you do behind the scenes, you're incredible. And I just good felt song. the Lord say that he wants to honor you publicly, yes. but also he wants to um, just remind you that you are his golden girl and that you are seen and that we value you and that we love you and that he's going to cover you in the breastplate of righteousness. So yeah, be blessed. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yay for rocks. So guys, we are preaching tonight on the fire of the Spirit. How exciting. <laughs> and I'm, I preached this morning, and so if you were here this morning, you're going to be hearing the same message, but we just pray double portion, right? And um, the exciting thing is this morning, guys, we had some salvations. Like, people were so hungry. One of them ran to the front. She couldn't wait. And we had people baptized and filled with the Spirit of God. And so tonight, my declaration is, Lord, do it again. And whilst praying for this evening's meeting, I actually really believe that God wanted to redeem this meeting. So like, just as in the latter days, people's lives were marked by moments on a Sunday night in Glenridge Church, so too, this Sunday night meeting is going to be where you encounter the Lord face to face. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And so are you hungry? Is my question, because I am. <laughs> and uh, my dad is actually in Malawi on a mission trip. That's why my mom's half here, because she's not on her own. She's fully here, but half the reason she's here. And um, he has t- was telling us some radical stories um, when I caught up with him this week. And one of them was that the pastors are so hungry for the Lord. And the Mozambican pastors canoed for six hours to get to Malawi. Six days. That's even better than six hours <laughs> for my story. Six days to get to the, the meeting, then jumped on bicycles for 120 kilometers with no gears. And one of the pastor's wives got tried to eaten by a crocodile, and the man fought him off, fought the crocodile, and they were at my dad's meeting. And these pastors are so hungry for the Lord, but they don't have Bibles. And they literally pass around the Bible from church to church, pastor to pastor. And one of them has even planted a church, and it's more than doubled in size. And um, what is the point? The point is that we have to go. That Ignite the Fire said, Taryn said it so beautifully this morning, how will they know if we don't go? And I love this story and I love the passion in Gary and Bernie's hearts because they have this imprinted on their hearts. How will they know if we don't go? And so tonight, friends, my prayer is that actually the Holy Spirit would baptize us with the Holy with with him and with fire so that we could go and be contagious to the world around us and the world around us would be ignited for Jesus. And while praying, I, I actually prayed uh, for this meeting and I, my feet, I just had this vision of our feet being on fire for the gospel. And I felt like the Holy Spirit's walking around even while I'm preaching and he's touching your feet and he's setting them on fire. And he says, where you go, I go. Where you, you know, where, where, um, 
your people will be my people. But where you go, the very places of your feet, the Bible says, um, will be, help me, somebody. Where your feet tread, I will give you that land. And so that is my prayer for us, that he would set your feet on fire. And so, the fire of the Holy Spirit. So, let's jump into, if you've got your Bibles, we're going to turn to Leviticus chapter 6. And the context of this is that the people of Israel were at the foot of Mount Sinai, and Moses had just received instruction from the Lord um, on all the offerings, the feast days, the holy days, what they were to do, the law. And now Moses was instructing the people of this. And one of them that we're going to is the burnt offering. And he was telling the priests how to wear their garments, what to wear, what to do with the ash heaps, what to do with the burnt offerings. And we come to uh, Leviticus 6, chapter 12. And um, this is what the Lord instructed. He says, the fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning, the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offerings on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. And so in the altar in the, in the Old Testament, this was a designated place where the people of God came to commune with the Lord. And we don't have altars anymore because of the perfect Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. He became our perfect sin offering. And no longer in the Old Testament, the priests had to perpetually, continuously go and present an offering for their sins. But now in the New Testament, Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross and became the once and for all sacrifice. And you know what, friends? The beautiful news of the gospel is that I get to access the Father because of Jesus, Jesus' blood. And yes, um, he, has, he had took my sin, he took my shame, he took my unworthiness, he took my offense, he took my... Um, my wrong ways of thinking, and he, it died with him at the cross. And when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And when we stand before the Father, he sees us through the perfect spotless lamb who is Jesus Christ. And so I want to say to, tonight, stop disqualifying yourself. Confess that Jesus is your Lord. We've got a job to do. We've got to, we've got to access boldly and confidently and um, let this world burn with fire for Jesus. And so the big instruction was that the fire was not to go out. And so when Jesus came, in, John, um, in the book of John, it actually says Jesus is telling his disciples, he's giving one of my favorite books of the Bible where they teach on the Holy Spirit. And he says, it's actually better that I go to the Father. It's to your advantage, he says, that I go to the Father so that I can give you the gift of my Holy Spirit. It's quite an incredible thing. The Holy Spirit is not our um, sideline player or the player on the bench that we get to sub in when we feel like it. No, he is fundamental to the Christian life. And we cannot afford to live a powerless life for Jesus. We have to have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says we can, we can have, ask for the Holy Spirit and he would give the Holy Spirit to us in a full measure. It's time, I, I really believe that some of us here have been surviving on the breadcrumbs of revelation of the Holy Spirit that we've just been satisfied with the crumbs. When Jesus died to invite us to the feast, to feast on the bread of life. And so this morning, this not this morning, tonight, it's dark outside, tonight, tonight, God wants to encounter you and he wants to invite you to the table to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ. Will you accept this invitation? He's calling your name tonight. I really believe it. He's calling your name to come, come to Jesus. He's got big plans for you. So in Acts 2, the day of Pentecost completely changes things. 
And these 120 disciples came and waited in the upper room. And they probably worshipped and they prayed. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them. And a rushing wind came and tongues of fire appeared on their heads. And the rest is the beautiful good news of the book of Acts and the New Testament where we see signs, wonders, and bold proclamation of the gospel. And so, friends, we have a weighty response to the gospel message. And that is that he has died on the cross. He has made his altar, his home in our hearts. And we have a responsibility to steward the fire of our hearts for him. And so Josh, or where's my, Josh is like my Old Testament priest. <laughs> we have a fire. We're going to burn a fire. And I said this morning, which is so true, Stan's not here, so we will, when the cat's away, the mouse will play. <laughs> but um, just for a purpose of illustration, I really wanted us to get this message that we have a weighty response to steward the Holy Spirit's friendship in our lives. And so, thank you guys. This is a fire. And I wanted to point out that this is like this pretzel design. <laughs> Look at it. Oh, sweet. Come, guys, come right. Don't climb on top. No, baby, go sit. Go sit on the blankie. Mm -hmm. This is like, the, this, is, um, this is beautiful. This is the kingdom. Can I just free you? Because actually children are a part of the kingdom of God. And I actually love hearing their chit chatter because I think that's what heaven's like, you know? So this is, this, um, this is like the container of our hearts. It's like the altar of our hearts, right? This is our heart. And we have a responsibility when we come to Jesus um, to guard the deposit. Uh, 1 Timothy actually says, guard the deposit which has been entrusted to you. What is that deposit? It's the Holy Spirit. We are called to guard that. How do we guard that? We add firewood to the Holy, we add fire to the fire that he has started. So the beautiful thing is in Leviticus, in the book of Leviticus, God actually started the fire miraculously. And when he found the offering acceptable, he would come and consume the entire offering, that nothing would be left. And you know what? Jesus was beautifully accepted before the Father. And he sent his own son, and Jesus became that burnt offering, and he found it acceptable. And so now we have the fire of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And so what do we do, guys? When we pray to Jesus, when we worship him, we're adding wood to the fire. We're stewarding the fire of our hearts. When we pray in tongues, the New Testament says on all occasions, pray in the Spirit. Friends, we've got to get back to, a peop to being a people who pray in the Spirit. And this morning, this, not this morning, I'm sorry, I keep saying that. Tonight, if you do not know how to pray in tongues, we're going to have a moment where the Holy Spirit's going to fall on you and you're going to have the gift of tongues. You know what tongues does? It edifies us. And sometimes we don't know what to pray. But Jesus is our perfect high priest, our great intercessor. And when we pray in tongues, we pray the will of God, I believe. And so praying in tongues is like adding wood to fuel to the fire of our hearts. Community, friends. Being in community adds, adds fuel to our fire. And so, Josh, you can come light it. And then, you know what, friends? But just before, quickly, Josh is that this is not an exhaustive list. Yes, we can worship, pray, be in community. Um, sorry. No, no, <laughs> a good point. Actually, guys, one of my points is actually adjusting our lives to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So just as Josh is adjusting the fire so that when he lights it, it can burn, we've got to adjust our lives to the leadership of the Spirit. And this is not an exhaustive list. This is a heart posture because we're in love with the King. And what happens when we draw near to God? The Bible says he will draw near to us. And he says that he rewards those who diligently search him out. 
What is the promise? When we diligently search out the Father through prayer, worship, time with Him in the secret place, He burns in our hearts and He sets a fire that cannot be contained. We will contain this fire though. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. That's perfect. That's beautiful. And so some of you might be sitting here tonight going, how do I get hungry? I'm not hungry for the Lord. Get around hungry people is my encouragement. Get in the secret place. And Revelations 1 describes Jesus as the, one, the man with fire in his eyes. And so tonight, tonight guys, I want to encourage us that if you want to burn for him, you've got to look at the man with fire in his eyes. Because his fire will consume you. Will you burn for him, friends? We owe it to the world around us to burn for Jesus. Luke, Luke 3.16 says, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. Give it up for our fire starters. Oh, Thank you, my queen chain. Thank you, Taz and Greg. My next point, thankfully we didn't take that fire away. Thank you. <laughs> See, I'm even lost in my notes. But is that, this is a, a, like a warning, I suppose, but a good, a good warning is that we can, we can um, quench the spirit of God in our lives. So 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19, Paul writes, do not extinguish the spirit which means that we actually can put out some of the flames of the Spirit. How? I believe through a fence. Okay? We're holding on to a fence. The Holy Spirit is, is grieved a little bit. We um, sit with unforgiveness. We put in the fire of our hearts out. We, 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 we're living in a cycle of sin. Maybe it's little sin. Maybe it's just like, um, I don't know, what's a little sin? I'm not going to classify sin, but sin, you know? Um, what if it's shame? I even believe sometimes we hide in secrecy our sin. Put the fire out. God says, guard the deposit which has been entrusted into you. Ephesians 4 says, do not, in the Message Bible, Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break with all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and thoroughly as Christ forgave you. Some of you need to hear tonight, God has forgiven you of your sin. I'm happy if you want to take the fire out. Yeah, Paul's like, please take the fire out. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so when the fire of the Holy Spirit burns in us, when the fire of the Holy Spirit burns in us, <laughs> he convicts us of sin. That's one of the, the fundamental roles. What is the roles of the person of the Holy Spirit is that he brings conviction. And so even as a believer, even as a mature believer, we've, are present, we've got a, a job to present ourselves holy and acceptable before the Lord. And so as I spend more time with Jesus and I spend more time looking at the man with fire in his eyes, Jesus Christ, he's going to convict me of things of the flesh. And the Bible says, be quick to confess. Quickly deal with that so that you can carry on living a life fueling the fire of God in our hearts. The Holy Spirit washes us in Titus uh, 3, chapter 3, verse 5. He washes and he renews us. What happens when a fire comes? It actually clean, cleans the land. Like if you've seen a fire break on a field, it, it um, burns all the old things away so that the new things can, can appear. 
The Holy Spirit washes and sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. If you battle with um, limiting belief system, if you think you're not good enough, I want to challenge you. Become friends with Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. He will reveal the truth to you. And the Holy Spirit will reveal the Son to you. And so how do we tend to the flame of our hearts? Just wanted to move this one special point is that we must adjust our lives to, the light to Jesus, as I said. We must not expect Jesus to adjust to us. We must adjust our lives to the Holy Spirit. And so in our garden, we have been having this beautiful family of doves in our garden. And the boys, we were like explaining the Holy Spirit to them and that Jesus appeared, um, the Holy Spirit appeared on Jesus' shoulder um, in the form of a dove. And that doves are sensitive and doves are gentle and doves are peaceful. And um, it was really funny because one of the boys ran into the garden to try, you know, that's what we do with the hardy dogs normally. I'm like, go square the hardy dogs. And so one of the boys ran onto the garden and then they were like, Rawr! and the other boy shouts, don't chase the Holy Spirit away. <laughs> it's Jesus' bird. And I love that they're just, you know, such children. But isn't it true, guys? We can, we can like do the same thing with our lives. And so whilst understanding the doves, I actually researched it and doves and pigeons were actually both acceptable before the Lord in the Old Testament. You could present either a pigeon or a turtle dove and both were holy. And doves and pigeons are from the same family of birds. However, they are personality-wise so different. So let's look. Doves can't stand noise or loud places. Pigeons love cities and they, they're okay with loud noises. Doves are afraid of humans. Pigeons are not. Doves are not territorial. Pigeons are and will actually bully one another to prove that it's their territory. Talk about the self, hey? Doves cannot be trained or domesticated. Pigeons can be. You can actually train them to come back to a cage. Once out of a cage, a dove will never return unless there's no food. But pigeons can be relegated to cages and lack closed spaces. A dove's only mate with one mate for life, and pigeons have many mates. So when you look at yourself, friends, are you, do you have a dove mentality or a pigeon mentality when it comes to the Spirit of God? Do you try and domesticate the Holy Spirit in your life and and make him adjust to the way you are? Or do you take on the leadership of the Spirit, who is a dove, and, and let the freedom of Christ reign in your life? We could either have a pigeon or dove response. Do our lives reflect his leadership, the leadership of the Spirit, or is something else leadership leading us? Those are the questions I wanted to ask you. Luke, you can come strum for us. Just got two stories as we close, but I don't feel the Lord's done with us. Taryn shared a, a dream with me of a lady in the congregation this morning, and she had God wake her up in the middle of the night last night, and he said to her that he wants to pour out the fire of God on his church that it's not just reserved for the leadership, but it's reserved for every single person. And so if you have come tonight, it's because he wants to encounter you and baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. See where? He wants to baptize you. And if you have come, don't, Levi, I just love, where are you, Levi? I just love that you were like, I'm just gonna come. Because he wants to baptize you with fire. You are destined to burn for him. For the world around you, Levi, he has marked you. And tonight is a marked moment where he wants to pour out his fire so that you would burn uncontainably for him. And um, I remember when I was in my varsity days, which feels like forever ago now, but um, I, I, it was a, a moment in God, it was a season of my life where I was marked by hunger. 
And I really do, do believe that that three years, it was like God completely shifted my life. It was like he gave me eyes to see and ears to hear. And I was so hungry. And I, it, it wasn't like anything I did, but it was like he poured out his fire in my heart. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and God would wake me up and give me a book of the Bible and reading whole chapters of the Bible in the middle of the night. And then waking up and I had this oak tree on the field outside my res and I would go sit at the oak tree and just declare the Psalms out loud, declare my love for the Lord. I remember going to lectures and lit, like I'm not even exaggerating. It was wild and I want that hunger again. But it's like I would run home, quite literally, like run home so that I could be with Jesus, so that I could learn his ways and hear his voice for me. And I remember a carpet so similar to this in my res room which was so tiny and me and Jesus would meet on the floor day in day out morning and night and I would sing to him and cry out in tongues and ask him for his revelation of my life and I remember specifically the one the one day I was crying out on the floor like this and he gave me a vision where he came and he knelt down right next to me and he linked his arms in mine and he said where are we going Jan where are we going? I'm coming with you. Where are we going? And tonight, friends, I feel like he's saying to you, where are we going? We are called to burn for him. It's not okay to be mediocre. It's not okay to be lukewarm. It's, it's time to be red hot for Jesus, to be on fire for him. We've got to be called the burning ones. And Glenridge, tonight the Holy Spirit is declaring over you, Liz, you are a burning one for him. Tom, you are called to burn for him. I want to burn for Him. And we must be willing, friends, to pay whatever price we have to pay so that we can have more of Jesus. That we've got to get to a place where it's not about the promise or the blessing, but it's about having the reward of Jesus Christ Himself, of being able to see the man with fire in his eyes. And I want to end with this story, which I have listened and tapped out so I could make sure it's accurate. But it is wild. Are you ready to be blown away? Gary, you're going to love this story, bro. There's an Indian pastor who tells the story. He was an evangelist in India. And in the early 1980s, he was traveling to Kolkata by train. And they go through quite rural areas. It was nighttime. And the train suddenly stops in the middle of the night. And the Holy Spirit tells him to get off the train and go out into the jungle. So he gets out the train, he walks a couple hundred meters, and he gets to the middle of the jungle. And he hears the Lord say, preach the word loudly. There's nothing around him but bushes. He sees nothing, and he knew no one was there. But he preaches loudly. And at the end, he gives an invitation to respond to the gospel, and he says, Amen. He goes back to the train, and he carries on his journey. Many years later, the same Indian pastor was invited back to that same area in Passion Week to Baldar Baptist Church to preach. He hadn't been back to that area since the night the train stopped. So he shares his testimony of the time the train stopped in the middle of the night and Holy Spirit asked him to share the gospel message loudly. After hearing this, the pastor of the church gets up and he starts crying loudly and he starts telling his church that night, this pastor of the church went into the jungle and he was hiding as he committed murder and the police were chasing him. And he ran into the jungle thinking he would commit suicide by throwing himself on the train tracks. But suddenly, that night, a voice spoke to him, preaching the glorious gospel, and he gave his life to Jesus. And after that, he went to Bible school and he became a pastor. And the part that pastor always prayed to God, that God would make him meet the man who shared the gospel loudly that day.
It's the simple obedience to the Holy Spirit's leadership in our lives. Sometimes we think it's the big things that we call to obey God in, but it's the small, simple promptings of the Holy Spirit that can literally change an entire region. And so my encouragement tonight, friends, is to develop and steward the fire burning in our hearts that the Holy Spirit wants to ignite in you. And to keep the friendship of the Holy Spirit, to keep Holy Spirit close. He is your helper. He is your counselor. He is your mentor. Will we seek the fire of the Holy Spirit? Will we burn for Him? It's time to burn for Him, Glenridge. So will you all stand with me? And before we hunger after Jesus together and ask for Him to fill us with His Holy Spirit and with fire, I believe that some of us here need to respond to the gospel message that Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice and He paid for your sin and He paid for your past and He paid for your shame at the cross. And no longer do you have to bear the weight of what you've done or your sin because He has paid with it for your blood, with His blood. And so if you want to accept Jesus into your life, would you raise your hand tonight? Jesus. It's another hand. If you've got, could you put your hand up again and just a leader around you come and pray if you want to give your life to the Lord. Marilyn and Rob, will you pray for him? Just lead him in the Lord's prayer, in the sinner's prayer. take time to enter in and then I want us to just actually um, wait before the Lord I know it's already nearly seven but you want to say something hello Hello. just as Jan asked if there's anyone that wants to give their life to Jesus tonight I was just reminded of Gary's testimony of that guy at the Comrades. There was like a, there was this urgency. And, um, and I feel like there's, there's still some more people here tonight who, after you heard Gary's testimony, there was like, yes, there was like this urgency in your heart and you weren't kind of sure what it was. That was the Holy Spirit. And... Would you impart hunger into our hearts now, Lord? That would be a people so hungry for you, so desperate for you, Jesus. And I pray that you would fill us up tonight to the overflowing and baptize us with your spirit and with fire and with power. We are hungry, Lord. Come baptize us, Holy Spirit. Come burn in our hearts, Jesus. Would you ignite fires in our hearts tonight, Lord? Let's just wait for him. Oh uh-huh. 
Baptize us. 